All right, so today we're going to be going over how to apply for a certificate of type 2 non-irrigation grandfathered right. That can also be found under the Douglas AMA section. So go ahead and click that link. Just like the other applications, it's going to ask who you are. So if you are the owner of the land applying for the right, go ahead and hit self. If you are a consultant or an attorney filling out for a client, go ahead and choose others. Today, we're just going to choose self. All right, so it's going to bring you to the opening page. Once again, we have the disclaimer explaining the fixed fee of $75 for each application. And the first question is going to ask you if you will be adding substantial capital investment attachment to this form. For simplicity today, we're going to hit no. And the first question is going to ask you your owner information. If you're logged in under your profile, it's going to auto-populate with what you signed up with. So now is a good opportunity to make sure that this information is correct and accurate. If multiple owners are applying under the same application, go ahead and hit this box. It will allow you to add extra owner information. It's important to remember as well uh, to not use your browser back and forward buttons. That could potentially delete all the information that you've added into this application. So just make sure that you're hitting the previous and next buttons down here in the lower right. If you stop and want to continue later, you can always hit save for later down here. And this application will show up under your to-do list on your homepage. All right, question two is asking how much groundwater was legally withdrawn from the land during the five years preceding the designation of the AMA. So for these, I'm just gonna put in random numbers. If no groundwater was withdrawn during one of those years, go ahead and put zero. Here we ask for documents explaining that water was withdrawn for a non-irrigation use. All right, and we're going to go to the next page. Question three is asking you for your well information. So in here, you'll put your well registry number. And the parcel number. The next item is going to ask you for the legal description for that parcel number. Once again, as you're filling this in, it's going to build a legal description based on the answers you put. At the end, just make sure it as closely resembles what you see on your deed as possible. We also have the option for quarters. 
go ahead and put the year was drilled. And if it's owned by you, go ahead and hit that box. And we also want to know the measuring device, if applicable. As always, we want to see a deed for that parcel. So that's where you'll upload. If you own multiple wells, you can hit this add button here up at the top right. And that will give you a whole new set of boxes to fill in. And we also want to see a deed for each entry as well. If you need clarification on any of these questions, if you hover your cursor over each of these little information bubbles here, it will explain the boxes further. For parcels, we do need to have them in a certain format. If you fail to use that format, it'll let you know with that red text below. We also want to know if you have also submitted a type one non-irrigation grandfathered right. If you select no, that's fine. If you select yes, it will ask you to upload the file for that application. This next box is asking you to make sure that the information you've provided is true and accurate. It'll ask you for the current date, but typically it'll auto-populate today's date. Now this page here is your last chance to verify that all the information entered was correct. Once again, make sure not to use the back and forward buttons in your browser. We ask that you do use the previous and next buttons here. If you want to stop and continue later, you can always hit the Save for Later button down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Submit. And it will take you to the payment screen, which we will explain in another video.